I'm going to show you how to install our gun kit. Basically what we have here is the pieces pre-cut ready to go. This will fit any single barrel gun or rifle. We've got two stock pieces, two receiver pieces, two foreign pieces, and a barrel piece. First thing you want to do is disassemble your gun. So we've pulled the barrel and the forend off and we've loosened the recoil pad here so that you can get your knife in there and trim. Then you can tighten it back up. There's just two Phillips screws inside your recoil pad on your gun. Some guns will vary, but that's basically what you've got here. So now we're going to clean the gun real well, pay special attention to uh, up here along the edge of the base of the rib, any place where oil would hang out. You want to make sure you get all those areas cleaned with like a wax and grease remover, something that'll cut through the gun oil and clean this gun up so it's ready to go. Now the gun is thoroughly cleaned. What you want to do is start with a stock and just peel your stock piece off and you're ready to go. All right, now you've got your stock piece and you're going to line it up. So what you want to do is put it right where the stock ends on the receiver and then line it up on your stock and just check and make sure you've got it evenly spaced from top to bottom. And the nice thing about this material is you can reposition it. So you know, just take your fingers and double check and say, well, I need to raise it just a slight bit and that's going to be about center of your stock. So once you've got it lined up, then take your hand and just gently push down on the material just to flatten it against the surface of the stock. And once you've got that done, you're going to just work your way all the way around the stock piece. When you get up here to the pistol grip, we're going to have to stretch the material a little bit to conform around that curve. This area here around the top of your stock is an area where there's a, a, a pretty drastic curve. So what you'll want to do is just heat that a little bit and lay that piece over. All right, you just want to trim off the excess. There's a little bit that's up here on the receiver piece. Trim off a little bit around the base of the uh, trigger. I've gone ahead and cut off the back here where the recoil pad's loose. Then you'll take your knife and you'll just lay it flush with the edge of your stock and just trim that around. Go ahead and push down that edge real good. And what you want to do, there's all shapes and sizes of stocks. So what you want to do is just make sure you've got enough material to go at least halfway around the stock. Because you've got a second piece to come on here and lap over the other side. Next, you're ready to do the receiver piece. So you identify the receiver piece. There's a slight curve in it here. Just pull it loose. This piece basically will line up with the back of your stock. All right, we've laid our receiver piece on. We're basically going to match it up with the stock piece here. And you're going to have a little extra here because we've made it a little bit big so it'll fit bigger three and a half inch guns. Now the other thing, when you're doing a rifle, you're going to combine the forend piece with the receiver piece to make the length of your stock. And it's very simple, just between the two joints, if you want to just make an irregular wave cut, their seam will disappear. You won't even know it's there. So you've got these pieces to put on a rifle. So now we're back to our shotgun. We've got this piece started. We're going to go around the bottom side and we're going to go around the top side. There's a curve here at the top. Put a little heat on there and that'll help this material make that transition around that curve. We'll bring our heat in, warm this material up a little bit, and that'll help it conform around the curve here on the top of your receiver. And just take your thumb and just work that material down flat. There'll be a few little ridges in there, but just take your fingers and just push on those ridges tops and all that material will conform and lay flat. It makes a nice, smooth, perfect transition around that curve. This is the beauty of the cast vinyl system that we have, that when you put a little heat to it, this stuff will absolutely conform to every curve on this shotgun. All right, now we've got a receiver piece on. We've got to push down. We're just going to do a little trimming. So just lay your X-Acto knife or your, your cutting knife on the front edge of your receiver and just bring that following that edge. And what I like to do is angle this slightly inward and what that does is that just creates a little bit of an angle to your cut and then you just take that edge and just push it down and it's there to stay. The beauty of the shotgun kit is besides the fact that it, it protects your gun and it camouflages, this thing is waterproof 
and it's ready to go in the field when you get done. So, you know, with a little bit of trimming around the, the pins that go through here, trimming around your trigger assembly, this gun can be completely disassembled just like it always has and cleaned, put back together and it's ready to go in the field. This is a wonderful application for a firearm. All right, now on some guns, up at the top of the receiver, it's actually recessed and there's grooves in here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you cut that piece out. Because what we found is that when you stand this gun up in a duck blind and it's raining and there's water running down, it's going to track down the top of that ventilated rib into this grooved out area. So what you want to do is just take your knife and just trim that area out. And pull this piece loose. Now we've completed the stock and the receiver piece. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you how to do the barrel and the fore end. One of the things you want to do is look at the back of the ventilated rib and that tells you where this barrel piece fits onto the receiver. So you want to start your camouflage just inside that edge so it doesn't smash up when you put the barrel on. The other thing you want to do is you want to nest this material up at the base of your supports for your ventilated rib. And then once you've got that done, you'll wrap this around the barrel. You'll make a couple cuts so that it conforms around this piece here and then you're going to wrap all the way around the other side and you'll be completed. Basically there's one piece to do the barrel. You pull this off and you're going to start it right at the base of the rib. If your barrel doesn't have a rib, of course you don't have to worry about that. You can just wrap the whole barrel. So here's our barrel piece. Obviously it's a little long. All right, once you get the barrel started, you're basically right at the base of the rib. Just work with your fingers and just make sure you don't leave any air bubbles in there. So just kind of push yourself and roll your thumbs around as you go. Your fingers really work the best here. And what you're trying to do is make sure you don't miss any spots. And you can use just overlapping strokes with your thumbs and make sure that that material goes down without any air pockets in it. And once you get to the base of this support here where your gas system comes in, you're going to make a small cut where that piece will fit over. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut around that and going to come in with a separate piece on the other side. So we just trim this out, lay that other piece on there, and our barrel will be completed. Well, now we have our barrel completed. We've trimmed the base, the end, and we're ready to go to the forearm now. We're going to wrap our fore in. So basically you've got two pieces to do that. You just lay this up, make sure you've got plenty of material and lay that down. Push this down with your fingers. It's repositionable, so if you get any wrinkles just lift it up, pull it tight, and just work your vinyl down with your fingers. It tapers smaller. You can see how it tapers slightly and when that happens just take a little heat, heat that front end up, just get that material a little softer and then just take your fingers and just work it on around to the front. Now we've got our gun completely camouflaged and it looks awesome. You know, one of the last things you want to do once you've got the kit installed and it's all trimmed up, guns put back together, just take your heat gun and put a little what we call post heat on it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to heat this up and once we get it good and hot, we're just going to push all this back in place. So you just take your hand with firm pressure, you can feel the temperature of this gun and you're going to push it firmly into place. And what that does is it kind of gives the material a new memory as to where it's at. So in all these little recessed areas, that's what you want to do. Go over the whole gun. Spend about 10 minutes and go over it one good time with the heat. Get it good and warm. So anyway, I want to tell you about all the different guns we can do. I mean, I've got a bolt action rifle. I've got a pump shotgun. I've got an automatic shotgun. It's a one size fits all kit. If it's a single barrel gun, it fits it. These products are awesome. You can go and switch the camo pattern on your shotgun depending on what you're hunting. This is a very affordable way to put a camouflage application on your gun and it works awesome. It's waterproof, weatherproof. You can disassemble your gun, clean it. If you ever want to take it off, you remove it. There's no glue residue left on there. It's just an awesome way to camouflage a firearm. Thanks a lot. I appreciate your time. We'll see you around. After you're all through and the installation is complete, you want to go back with heat from your heat gun and firm pressure with your squeegee all over the graphics. And what this will do is this will help set the graphics and it will create a new memory to ensure proper adhesion. After your project's complete, you want to keep the product 
in 60 degrees or warmer for as long as possible after the application. At least 12 hours is ideal before exposing it to either cold or wet climates. This will help strengthen the graphics bond to the surface. Make sure you review our tips and tricks video section to learn more about helpful installation techniques. Contact our customer service department at 888-449-6558 for further application support.